I do have an interesting technique that I want to show you that can be extended into whatever your wild imagination takes you to, to get so much more out of your router. Uh, the way we'll do that is by adding a shaped base to the bottom of the router so we can cut shapes, curves, or whatever. So um, what we want to do is actually radius a guitar fretboard. I've had this little project in mind. I don't think he's watching but um, for, I've been making this for my son. This is what I'm actually in the process of making. One of the things that I need to do is once I glue the fretboard on, I'm going to radius it. I never knew this about fretboards, that um, with guitars, they, they're curved in this direction. So some of you guitar aficionados are like, of course, Tom, don't you know? There's 10 degree, there's 12 degree, and there's, 16 degree. No, and then there's dead flat. There's dead flat, like if you have a classical guitar, you know, it might be flat or 16 degree. This one that I got from my good friend Terry Moore is 16 degrees. So it's pretty flat, not enough curvature for good action for playing more of an electric guitar. So we're going to go to 12 on this one to match a Gibson um, stop tail bridge that I'm picking up, a real beauty. And uh, it has a 12 degree radius. So I'm planning ahead and I wanted to work on a jig to get ready to do this. So I'm not actually gonna hit this, but we're gonna go through the process of developing something that will cut a beautiful 10 inch radius on a neck like this flawlessly. What we want to do is cut a nice 12 degree radius. So in order to do this, my thinking is to first start with a box. And I already went ahead and made this box and it's just four inches wide interior and it's four inches high exterior. I just figured what would work well to fit the guitar neck in there, okay? So this neck, let me slide this out of the way. This neck, when we're, when I've got my jig all set up, it's going to be fixed in here. So I'll use some riser blocks and I'm going to hold this and, and it'll be dead center. And I'm going to use the router to create the radius. Now, obviously we can't just use the router with its regular plate on the bottom or we'll create a flat. So we've got to alter the plate on the bottom with an arc, with a 12 degree, I'm sorry, a 12 inch arc. I may have said degree several times, huh? mm -hmm. <laughs> but I meant to say 12 inch radius arc. Okay, so we're gonna make this base, but in order to do that, we're gonna do a little planning. But just remember that's the outline of our box. So it's four inches interior, four inches high. I only tell you that because I went ahead and drew that so that we don't have to spend too much time on it. So here you can see the, the box. So I've got, this is four inches from here to here, and it's four inches in between. This is just the reproduction of that end of that box you just saw. So it's the plywood. Now I want to be able to cut a radius. So I've got to create these kind of um, outriggers, you might call them, to attach to the bottom of the router that have that curvature. So here, just to lay it out really quick, um, I'm going to get a, just a stick and let me get a little brad here. If you had a large enough of compass, you could open that up and use it, but mine didn't go quite large enough here for to get the full 12 inches. So I first just drilled a 5 16 hole and jammed a pen in there. <laughs> so that's going to be my marking end. You can do it with a pencil or whatever. And then I measured over to find the center point of 12 inches. So you can see it's right there. 
This is my 12 inch mark. So I'm gonna put a little 18 gauge brad in there. Let's see, nothing fancy. So I, I put it in there and I snipped off the head and now I've got a little pivot point, all right? So I'm gonna bring this up. Now, in the jig, when I mount the guitar neck, is gonna be, this is like the end view of it. I'm gonna mount it and support it wherever it is so that the top of it is flush with the top of my jig. Okay, so this point right here is the top center surface of my guitar neck looking at the end view, All right? So with that as my, my point that I want a radius 12 inch radius here. So I took my little 12 inch compass, I found the right point, look, to match the face of that neck. So if I put it right in there and then I made my sweep, I'm gonna come out and I'm sweeping the 12 inch, must have bent my, well, I got off the center there a second. Okay, there we are. I don't want to do it too much because it is pen and I don't want to miss. All right, so that's my 12 inch radius line and it, the apex hits right at the center of the surface. So that 12 inch radius is what I want to create into the surface of that guitar neck, all right? Now, that's the center of the guitar, but check this out. Here's my box, my frame that I'm going to be sitting this in, and I want to sit my arced curve on the top of this box. So it's going to actually ride on this corner. I'm not going to bother beveling them. You could do that if you wanted to get fancy, but it's fine to just have it ride right on that edge as long as it's, you know, straight. So what I did was I measured it right from my center point of my 12 inch radius. And I came out and I discovered it is 12 and 5 16 to this corner, okay? So I measured right from the pivot point out to the corner and I've got 12 and 5 16 That arc is what I wanna create for my outriggers on my jig to make my router create that arc. Because what we'll do, if you see, if you're looking at the end view of my jig, we'll have five, 12 and 5 16 riggers or arcs. Those are gonna be riding on the corner. We'll plunge our router bit until it just touches the center. So it'll be in plane with the top of our jig. And then we'll go down and we'll make our passes and we will be skimming the neck to cut that nice 12 inch radius arc, all right? You could do this for tighter arcs. Some are even 10 or nine, uh, really strong sweeps. Uh, or you could do a 16 if you prefer. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and I'll show you the process now. All right, so I'm gonna use this piece of plywood to create the arc and let's get, at, a lot of this works off the center lines of things. So I've got my square. Oh good, it's already set up. And I'm going to just mark this center line. Okay, and then we'll come around this side. Make sure we're in the center. Okay, that looks good. So this, we're gonna cut this arc onto this piece. This is our 12 inch radius. We wanna create a 12 and three, I'm sorry, five sixteenths radius. So I'm just gonna gauge right here where I want to be about, I'll be right about here and make a mark right here. Okay, so this will be my center. Now I'm just gonna, I have to create a hole in this panel for my center. So I'm gonna just run over to the drill press. You don't have to go over, but you could zoom in if you want. I'm just gonna use the drill press because I want a good 
plum hole right there. So let me get a, an awl. I'll hit this. This is going to be my pivot point right on the center line. So we make our arc. All right there, we've got our nice pivot hole. So now we need to create um, an arc. So let's come to this table now and we'll, I've got a sacrificial piece of MDF that's nice to route into. I've got a router, just a small DeWalt, but it's really helpful for creating jigs and curves. So this is gonna be like a powered compass. So I'm gonna be able to cut whatever arc I want by these indexing holes on this piece of MDF. So all I did was throw a couple screws into, through the base, into the MDF, being careful to center the bit on the center line. Everything's gonna work off that center line. And then measuring from the bit, right on the inside edge of the bit, I came over and I'm hitting, let's see, yeah, 12 inches to this hole right here, okay? So it's 12 inches there. So I'm gonna take this and use that as my axis, my pivot point, and go in through that hole we just drilled. And now, because I use the back shank of the same size bit, a quarter inch bit, I have a beautiful smooth pivoting arc to run on. You can use this technique to make all kinds of things, uh, round table tops, uh, templates for round tops, all kinds of stuff like that. All right, but what we wanna do is use it for this arc. Now, remember from our drawing, we wanna create that outrigger arc at 12 and 5 sixteenths radius so that when we plunge our bit at 5 16 we're going to be creating a nice 12 inch okay so i actually when i make when i make this sweep i'm going to be cutting on the other side of the bit i want that outside arc i want that one that's curved that way and it works out perfectly because this router bit that's in here is 5 16 diameter okay we measured 12 from this edge, but it's going to be cutting a 12 and 5 16 radius on the outside edge. So let's go ahead and just pin this down to the table and we can get to routing. I've got my little Grex. I should have given you these numbers too. This is a pin nailer. A lot of people ask about these when I'm using them. It's really nice pin nailer, but it's P635 Grex pin nailer. All right, so I'm just going to pin this to the table. And let's see, I don't want to hit. All right, I'll put it up here. Uh, yeah. All right, that's that. Now I'm going to plunge. And I set the plunge so I'm just shy of going through onto the table. I'm going to grab a knife because I'm going to have to cut that last little bit. All right, here we go. Let's get hearing protection on here. It's not going to make too much dust, so I'm going to go slow.
All right, so here's our outrigger. Now, I just wanted you to know, this end is good and square. I cross-cut that square, and there's our center line. So this is the center of the arc. So everything's working off that center line. Let's see, I'm gonna just slice in case. I have one little, I don't know, I might have cut it into the table there. Nope, there we go. I just gotta get this pin. So I'm just gonna snip it off and hit it with a file quickly. Okay. All right, so there we have it. Here's our outrigger, and this is going to create our arc. So this should be the same as our 12 and 5 16 radius we cut here. Look at that, it matches perfectly. Isn't that nice? See, I'll bring it down in there. Right there. Boom! Nice. <laughs> All right. So that's going to create our arc. And we need two of them, though. So to make this, I'm not going to make the other one right now. But what I would do is just cross cut this piece, get a nice square cut. And I could set this on here. And Make a pencil line from the flush end. Let's, let's say we made a cut down here. I could just put this on, mark with a pencil, bandsaw, then tack these two together and flush route the second one to be exactly the same. And while they're still together, I'm gonna carry that center line over because it continues on all the way through this project to keep going with the center line, that helps you. Now, I already went ahead and made two, so I've got it right here. All right, so we've got our two. I also marked the face side so I wouldn't turn them around. If there was any slight asymmetry to the curve, I don't want them opposite each other. I wanna make sure I keep them the same, all right? Okay, so now that I've got these, I'm ready to make, attach them to the base, which is going to house, hold the router. So here's the base I already cut. I just used the same length material here. I think it's 10 inches. I just went with 10 for this. I made sure I had enough so I wouldn't fall off my box there. So that's what you have to think about when you're doing this. Okay, so here's the way it's gonna go. Let me switch out my gun. I need some little heavier brads for this to finish this jig. But my router is gonna sit here, right? It's gonna sit on that outline I made there. And the outriggers are going to sit like this. So they're gonna be just below. And see that line, how it matches up? I want to set these so that they're equal in relationship to that center panel. So what I'm gonna do is, when I'm holding it right in position where I want it here, I want it really close to the bottom because I, it's, this is gonna be riding on the edge. I just wanna make sure I'm higher than that. And when I measure the other side opposite that, I'm an inch and seven sixteenths over here, okay? So I already went ahead and, and just roughed out a couple blocks that are identical, inch and seven sixteen. So when I put these here, this will be my guide. When it's flush over there, I'll be just below here. So let me go ahead and get organized. I'm gonna put these blocks underneath. Let's make sure there's no dust messing up our setup here. And and I'm gonna bring this in. I've got them oriented the same way. Okay. And so all I have to do is bring this over and I'm gonna hold pressure to make sure I'm on that base. So that's giving me a nice constant, nice parallel mounting underneath there. And we're gonna just go ahead and let's put some glue on here and we'll tack it on. All right, so we're just gonna go and get a little bit on here. 
I have to use this one. I don't have another one already made, so I better not screw it up. All right, so when I do this, I'm going to make sure my center line is marked, is, is in place, and that support piece is nicely parallel. And let's just hold pressure and get the nail gun, and I can come over into the middle. Now I'm using the uh, 18, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, 18 gauge. Make sure I didn't slip, yeah, good and flush. Looks great on the center line. Here we go. Let's get the other end. Actually, let's get one in the middle. And down the other end. Okay. Then I'll put one in between. Watch your fingers here. That's good. I didn't want to see a Brad pop up <laughs> on my arc. All right, that's beautiful. Okay, we've got half of it. Now we're gonna flip it around and get the other side. Same orientation. We're gonna come over to this side, set it right on there. Let's get a little more glue on here and we'll be jigging. I know a lot of you have requested me to do more jigs, uh, but I haven't been working on my moves lately, so please uh, be patient. All right, so here we go. We're gonna get it back. All right, check that out. Now, look at that. We've got our 12 and 5 16 radius here. So as long as we come down and touch the top of the piece that's gonna be mounted parallel with the sides, we'll be golden. All right, so let's bring this over to our bench. We're gonna bring up the box. Let's see if it works. Oh, that's nice. See, it's kind of self-squaring because if you get out of square, it doesn't move. So if you just, you can feel it, it's, it's in shape. So it's gonna make a nice cut like that. So check that out. We have increased the potential for our router dramatically here. We didn't have to buy a CNC machine. So there we are. We've got our radiusing jig. It's almost done. Let's go ahead and mount the router to it and give it a test drive. So I, I'm not gonna screw this to the base, but I'm gonna use double stick tape. I already marked the location of the router, as you saw on there. And all I have to do is land right inside those pencil lines that I already put there and we'll be in good shape. Okay, so all I've gotta do is pull this tape off and we're ready to rock. Here we are. This is just carpet tape that I get from, uh, you know, the bo box stores or whatever. It's lasts you a good long time. So I'm gonna bring it down and align it with those pencil marks I made earlier. Come on, slowly. That looks pretty sweet right there. Now I'm gonna press it down. And hopefully it won't slip. But th that tape is really tough. If you've ever used it, you know what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm gonna get my stop out of the way. Okay, there we are. Okay, we've got more than enough. So now, our cutter's ready, and now we want to make, just mount our test piece in here. I've got a piece right here. It's uh, a piece of pine. It's actually dimensioned very similar to the neck. It's two and a quarter down here. It's like an inch and three quarters up here. I'm just going to mount it roughly centered on this board here. Let me put it this way. Tom, and why not use a guide bushing to register the router on the jig? Steve's asking. I just drilled a larger hole. I, I don't know, for some reason I wanted to see it before. So, but yeah, that's actually a great idea. I'm gonna just center this roughly like this and we're gonna just flip it over and let's run some screws in the bottom. This is just a test piece, so I'm not worried about it. 
These are those Grex screws, they're awesome. I don't think it's the same company as the <laughs> nail gun. There we go. All right, check that out. Now we can put it into the jig and I'm gonna clamp this to the table. Let's do it at an angle like this so we can get clamps on each end and you can really see what's happening. And the clamps won't be in the way. Now I wanna center that, I wanna center this piece obviously so that we get our arc centered. And so I'm gonna measure, this space is four inches, so I just wanna be right at two inches to the center of this. So let's just go. Just gonna bump this over a touch. Okay, let me come down this end. At the other end here. We'll just nudge that over. So this is all key just to set it up correctly. All right, I want to get that pretty close and then I'll clamp, I'll tighten down the other end so that that looks great. All right, let's snug this down. And now we can hit the other end. Man, I sure hope this works. I don't see why it shouldn't, but um, it's all worth it. Yeah. At least the, the 300 or so people watching won't repeat what you've chosen to do if it doesn't work, right? They'll, <laughs> they'll know. They yeah, learn from a, others' yeah. mistakes. That's right. That's part of life. If you're, if you're wise. But. Here we go. Ah, oh, that's in there rock solid. All right, so let's bring in our star of the day. We're gonna bring it down. We just wanna plunge. Now, I didn't mention, but I have that riser piece so that I'm flush. Let's just see. See how that's right in line with the arc? So it's, it's flush with the top there. So if I just bring this down till I just touch the workpiece in the center, I'm on the center line. Just gonna very lightly touch it. Here we are, okay. That's it. So now, I'm not sure if I should go this way or make long passes. It shouldn't matter, should it? Because it's gonna end up creating the arc. I think the long passes are gonna work better. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna get my hearing protection on and my Safety glasses. See, this is where it's a blind cut. It, it, that's, I was thinking of drilling a bigger hole in there, which wouldn't hurt. And I could actually see down through there. Um. Check it out. Got a nice little radius on there. Now, I obviously, I went with that movement and I was a little rough with it, but you can see, you can take it out of there now. I probably should have stuck with it going straight. 
I have a half inch bit in there and my thought is it wouldn't matter because it's just the center of the bit that ends up making the final cut. So now let's check this out. You can see that's quite a bit more radius than the 16. Look at that. It does, it's barely noticeable, but when you put the square on there, you can really see it rolling. Now, I would do some straight shots. I don't like those cuts. Obviously, it was first time trying. This is why you do test pieces. Now, I could drop, plunge it a little more and see what works better uh, to get a better pattern. But in the end, after you do the routing, uh, arcing of the panel, you still need to sand it. Even PRS, they have a very extensive whoops, sanding session where they hit it. Now, this is a, a block that I bought from a guitar maker, uh, Stu Mac. You can find them online. A lot of you probably are familiar with them if you've made guitars. And it's just a block that's 9 and a 16. So this gets sandpaper put on it, stuck to it. And this is a 10 radius so that's a little little bit stronger and i could probably sand a 12 into a 10 pretty fast but i want to make a 12 so i'm going to make the opposite curvature here so i'm not going to do it now but i'll just show you i want to make an arc going the other way so it's a similar process but i'm going to make it longer because I saw in the videos, they have these long, like dead flat aluminum ones, because it's really critical that that, that neck is, starts out true and flat. Um, then you can adjust it later. So let's look at our drawing here. Here's our box again. Now, here's this time we're gonna be making an arc that sweeps and cuts a concave surface, okay? The other one was convex, the 10 inch radius. Here, this is the end view of my sanding block. And I want this radius down here to be 12 again. So I struck that same 12 inch radius into the block off of my center point, okay? Then I measured from the center point to the resting point where this arc is going to be on the box this time the inner edge and that dimension was 11 and 9 16 so i went ahead and did the same routing arced into my piece cut it 11 and 9 16 and so when i mount that sanding block into the block again i'm going to hold it at that height so it's down it's down about uh nine sixteenths or so or about a half an inch from the top edge and then i'll plunge my till i touch this outer corner or just make a few passes until i've hit the whole thing now when i do this one i'm going to use a narrower bit because this is on the interior and i want to make multiple passes and not have as much to clean up but you'll have some to clean up there, but that will create a nice arc here, except instead of being a 10, it's gonna be a 12, okay? So it's a little, slightly flatter than this one. Anyway, here's the pieces that I made for that. Here's the 11 and 7 16 radius. I tacked together with a second one, flush routed, and then sanded them. So now this is what I went through the process on the other one. So I've got two that are really identical. And then I would clean that up. But again, you do the same thing. And then, again, I would mount it to the box and we'd have just a separate box. And we would come back to the box here. And with our jig all set this way, you'd be able to cut a cove into whatever you were doing and that would create if i plunge the right distance from my drawing and i mount the workpiece there i will get a nice interior curvature of 12 inches so 
This is just a simple exercise to introduce this idea to you. You can take it in a lot of directions and use your imagination. I'm sure a lot of you have thought already, but I'm going to show you one other thing, the piece that I, I shared before. And this time when we talk about it, I think it'll, maybe it'll make more sense to some. I, I know some people really got it right away, but let me show you, I wanted to show you a photo of the table that it came from. So here's a pier table. On this one, I did a little more Art Deco treatment. So I had these um, terrace lobes on top. So these are at different heights. Pretty cool little thing. If some of you saw the coffee table, you might recognize that idea. But down on the pedestal here, look at this. We've got a center column that has a curvature like this. And then, I don't know if you can see it, but it has a concave surface. And all of these facets are veneered with some highly figured veneer. And then the corners are also veneered there. Those are broken a little bit. And then you have a little, somewhat traditional base, but this is actually derived with um, influence from period, but it's more of an art deco treatment. So we have these silver or nickel plated feet and it's all um, genuine mahogany. But this column, this base, this, um, this center column was made with this technique. Okay, so I'm using, this time, I'm cutting concave surfaces. So I need to cut that shape. And then I'm also getting this curvature. So the box that it's riding in won't have straight rails, but it'll have this curve in it. And let me show you what it is. I've got it right here. Here, you've got the router. So again, this is planned and laid out. So I'm only ending up with an arc approximately like that. So it has a pretty nice sweep, but your, your bit is gonna have to plunge slightly below that. So this is all planned on the drawing first, just like I showed you. And then here is the box. So instead of this panel can come out and mount, but I just wanna show you the sidewalls. This is also derived from the drawing to show you the sweep of the curve, the vertical curve. So when it rides in the box, the router sits here, you cut, you're cutting your concave arc this way, and as you move up the box, you're creating a nice sweep out the other way, okay? And let me show you what the finished column looks like. Now there's some, pieces used to hold it, but this is the same as the column of that table I just showed you. And this jig created it. So you can see, here's this curve on the side. So this gets mounted in the box and there's mounting lines here. This, these blocks get actually, with those holes, they get pin indexed and then it's just screwed to the bottom and it's held in the jig. And it gets indexed at the other end at the same center line height so that when you come into the box, you're gonna create that nice concave shape. Then I'd flip it, do that side. Now when I flip to the front, you're getting a wider concave shape. But if you look at this profile, this curve is a little flatter. So I substitute out different sidewalls that have a little less of a curve here. But all that is planned on the drawing. So I wanted a column like this. Now in the end, these corners get clipped, they get faceted and they come up and I just actually did that with hand tools and then I put a piece of veneer on it and it looked pretty sweet. But this is the, the same base as this, so when I bring this in, okay, this center column there, made by extreme techniques with your router. But how's that? So there you have it, extreme router techniques. <laughs> but you could go, I, I'm curious, you know, I, I see all kinds of creative things that people come up with. 
And I'm hoping this sparks some interest in your mind to get creative and push this to another level. What is the shape of this column before you route? Um, it is, well, of course, it's just square when I glue up the planks and then I made some guidelines. So while it was a square block and it's true, I marked the center lines again. So I'm making these cross center lines and I set up to, um, for the, the end caps that are going to hold it in place. And then I also have one that indexes that cuts these slots. So I did that with a router, plunge router, and the bottom is the same. But once I've marked it out, then I could lay um, a, uh, the shape that I got from my, my drawing. I could see the rough shape, and I would draw it there and bandsaw heavy, a little heavy to the line. So I bandsawed it out first after marking the center lines and having my indexing pins all set up. Then I could go into the jig and I'm really just skimming off, not a ton. I'm not removing a lot. So, so that's pre-sawn and then use your, your router. That's a good question. If you don't know, our neighbor, the neighborhood is our, um, it's, it's kind of a membership sub subscription. <laughs> that was smooth. <laughs> so smooth. Take two. Subscription oh, opportunity. You get discounts on plans and access to all the courses and many other things. That's right. So um, if you want, you're going to, to get announcements, the more details about this, be sure to um, subscribe to, what do you, what do we call it? The, the mailing ma list. The mailing list. Yes, so you'll get the announcement this weekend. Yeah, on um, the website. Yeah. And if you'd like to order plans, you can do that then, so... Get on the mailing list so that you can hear. You can do that at uh, in the description below. There's a link to that there, or you can just go to our website. That's right. And so we'll let you know so you can look at what's going on there. Thank you all once again for hanging out with us here in Canterbury. It's, it's really been great. I really appreciate you being here. If you enjoy this content, um, consider subscribing or not, but we just love that you come and hang out with us here for an hour or so. Yes. And we share the joy of creativity and woodworking, making beautiful things, leaving our beautiful little mark on this world. 